In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We come to pray in a spirit of thanksgiving to God our Father this morning, also asking for his guidance as we live through this day. We also pray, of course, for an end of the coronavirus. In our prayer today, we're asked to remember Asumta Rajanayagam and Mili Abhayvabhina. As we come to pray, we acknowledge we do sin, we do fail, we ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us now pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, we pray, a spirit of truth, understanding and peace, that we may know with all our hearts what is pleasing to you, and with one accord pursue what we have come to know. This prayer we make through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You have probably heard how I have been entrusted by God with the grace he meant for you, and that it was by a revelation that I was given the knowledge of the mystery, as I have just described it very shortly. If you read my words, you will have some idea of the depths that I see in the mystery of Christ. This mystery that has now been revealed through the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets was unknown to any man in past generations. It means that pagans now share the same inheritance, that they are parts of the same body, and that the same promise has been made to them in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I have been made a servant of the gospel by a gift of grace from God who gave it to me by his own power. I, who am less than least of all the saints, have been entrusted with this special grace, not only of proclaiming to the pagans the infinite treasure of Christ, but also of explaining how the mystery is to be dispensed. Through all the ages, this has been kept hidden in God, the creator of everything. Why? So that the sovereignties and powers should learn only now. Through the church, how comprehensive God's wisdom really is. Exactly according to the plan which he had from all eternity in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is why we are bold enough to approach God in complete confidence through our faith in Him. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, our response, you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my savior. With joy, he will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. Sing a song to the Lord. 
You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. For he has done glorious deeds, made them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Please stand to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Be watchful and ready. You know not when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. Thank you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what hour the burglar would come, he would not have let anyone break through the wall of his house. You too must stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, do you mean this parable for us or for everyone? The Lord replied, What sort of steward then is faithful and wise enough for the master to place him over his household to give them their allowance of food at the proper time. Happy that servant if his master's arrival finds him at this employment. I tell you truly, he will place him over everything he owns. But as for the servant who says to himself, my master is taking his time coming, and sets about beating the men servants and the maids, and eating and drinking and getting drunk, his master will come on a day he does not expect, and at an hour he does not know. The master will cut him off and send him to the same fate as the unfaithful. The servant who knows what his master wants, but has not even started to carry out these wishes, will receive very many strokes of the lash. The one who did not know but deserved to be beaten for what he has done, will receive fewer strokes. When a man has had a great deal given him, a great deal will be demanded of him. When a man has had a great deal given him on trust, even more will be expected of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's reading from St. Paul is an invitation, an invitation to accept the challenge to stretch beyond our perceptions and listen to our longings for truth, beauty and life in all their fullness. Our own personal quest for truth and meaning will not always be a smooth undertaking, but it requires that we become more and more open to the fullness of the mystery of God's revelation. For example, Paul discovered long before Peter that pagans now share the same inheritance as the chosen people. In other words, salvation is offered to every single person. What we need to do is to always approach our God in complete confidence, realizing that God is always there for us, always wants to help us, always will be there supporting and loving us. Now, this point that St. Paul makes today is that we all need to move beyond our comfort zones and strive to enter into a more fulfilling and deeper relationship with God, as well as continually work towards developing our full potential, but also, like Paul, to accept that we are all called to be witnesses for Christ. The reality is that our relationship with God can always be better. Also, we can find opportunities each day to grow to full maturity. As well, we can find ways to be loving and caring to others with whom we have contact. The reward is the peace that surpasses all understanding, and also an experience of life in all its fullness. One of the aims of our lives, individually and collectively, is to discover the plan of God for us each day. This also involves finding ways to apply the Christian message to every single aspect of our lives. Now that is a lifelong journey. We'll succeed, we'll fail. As long as we start again, that's all that's important. The message of St. Paul is that our God wants to be totally part of our lives. 
wants to have a personal relationship with each one of us. Now, the only thing that hinders this is that God respects our free will and he waits for our invitation and our free response. So, we need to ask ourselves, how open are we going to be to developing our relationship with God today? We're told in our Gospel reading today that to whom much is given, much will be required. So the question our Gospel raises for us today is, how would we like God to find us when our time on earth is complete? Certainly, we'd like to, Him to find us with our work completed. Yet there are many things in the lives of all of us that are still undone, things half done. There are things we have not even attempted. As well, we would like God to find us at peace with one another. As St. Paul said in one place, we should never let the sun go down on our anger. We should also like God to find us at peace with him, to have a loving and personal relationship with him. The reality of life is we cannot simply do what we wish to do as though God doesn't exist. Unfortunately, I think we have a bad habit of dividing life into compartments. There is the part where we remember that God is present and there is the part where we never think about him at all. The reality is, if God is truly our God, he has to be God of every aspect of our lives. We have to invite him to every single aspect of our daily living. You know, I think the most dangerous aspect of life is when we discover the word tomorrow. Tomorrow is not here, it's not relevant. We need to treat today as extremely important. And this is true of every day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are God's servants. He has placed great trust in us. Aware of his call, we turn to him in prayer. For the Church, under the guidance of Pope Francis and his fellow bishops, let us become more and more a community where people can discover their gifts and use them. Lord, hear us. May world leaders be constantly reminded that they are servants called to give to the poor what is theirs by right. Lord, hear us. For those who feel no need of God, may they come to see his power and beauty in every human achievement. Lord, hear us. For ourselves in this community, may we be renewed by opening our hearts joyfully to each other and to the Lord of all life. Lord, hear us. We pray for our needs of today and those of all our brothers and sisters. We pray for people experiencing illness, especially those suffering from the coronavirus. We pray also for those who have died and their families. Lord our God, we thank you for your constant presence in our changing world. May your presence ever remind us that we are never alone. And we make our prayer today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with gracious favour, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings of your servants, 
that they may truly understand and proclaim with confidence what is right and wholesome in your sight. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. We we'll pray the Eucharistic prayer. God guides his church along the way to salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, all creator of the world and source of all life, for you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the pastoral sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. 
Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Andrew and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now pray the prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us physically today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Invite those taking communion to the sixth floor, please. Invite those taking communion to the sixth floor, please. Today you are to take the body of our Lord Jesus Christ to our brothers and sisters who are unable to be with us. We ask you to give to them our greetings and our love, read the scriptures to them, pray with them, and minister to them this most precious sacrament. Let us now pray. Grant us, O merciful God, that the holy gifts we have received may confirm us in our resolve to do your will and make us everywhere witnesses to your truth. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless all gathered here in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify God in your daily lives. Amen.